This video is about feature modeling. Using linear regression we can approximate a linear function to estimate certain properties, like the price of a house based on its size. For a single input feature, this corresponds to finding a line in the xy plane. For multiple input features, this corresponds to finding the hyperplane in the input-output space. However, what if the relation we seek to learn is not linear in nature? Consider as an example the displayed data points. We can try to fit a line through these data points. However, we might get a much better fit if we were to fit a curvy function instead. Analogously, for multiple inputs this would allow us to approximate curved surfaces or manifolds in high-dimensional spaces. To see how we can achieve this, let us go back to our formulation of the linear regression problem. In linear regression we model our inputs and weights as vectors, such that the output can be estimated by a simple dot product. If we now know that the data behaves proportionally to the square of input x1, we can simply provide this as an additional feature, and assign a corresponding weight for the regression. Similarly, if we think that the sine function of x2 times the square root of x5 is a good indicator of the function, we can add this as a feature and provide a corresponding weight. In general, we are free to choose any function of the inputs and provide it as an additional feature. So what functions should we choose? Consider as an example that we want to buy a house and estimate its price. We base our estimate on the size of the house and its distance from the city center. Before we move to functions of features, what other data would you collect to get a good estimation? Pause the video and think shortly what else might be relevant. One factor that might be relevant as well is the age of the building. However, there are countless other examples that could improve your estimate, like the distance to grocery stores or the level of noise pollution. But let's stick to the three displayed features for now and name them x1, x2, and x3, respectively. Now consider what functions of these inputs might be beneficial to add as additional features. Pause again and see whether you can find some. The price per square meter of accommodation is probably larger in the city center than outside the city. It might therefore make sense to add a feature x1 over x2 to account for the fact that the price varies relative to size and distance. This is just one example, and there are other combinations you can think of. In general, to know what features to choose, we normally rely on what we know about the function f that we seek to approximate. In particular, if we know that f belongs to some family of functions capital F, we can design the features to represent this family of functions. The family of functions is what is also referred to as the model of the regression. For instance, we might want to restrict our model to polynomials of degree m. This is also called polynomial regression, even though it is just a special case of linear regression. Note that the linear regression method can handle any model, as long as the parameters w are linear coefficients. For polynomial regression with multiple inputs we also have to account for the multiplicative interactions between features by adding corresponding terms like here. In general, for polynomial regression with degree m and input dimension d we have d plus m minus 1 choose m features. Let's go back to our example of estimating the price of a house. Apart from the continuous features like the size and the distance to the city center discussed so far, the price is most likely also influenced by discrete features like the city in which the house is located. To be more specific, let's say we consider the options Amsterdam, Moscow and Pisa. How can we model such a discrete choice as an input feature? Please pause and think for yourself before continuing. We could encode this set by assigning a dedicated value to each city. For example, we represent Amsterdam with a 1, Moscow with a 2, and Pisa with a 3. But then Moscow somehow lies between Amsterdam and Pisa, so Moscow will behave exactly like a mix of Amsterdam and Pisa. This is probably not what we want. Instead, we add one input feature for each element in the set. In the given example with three cities we therefore add three input features. We can then represent each of the choices by setting the corresponding feature to 1 and the others of the set to 0. So Amsterdam would be represented as 100, Moscow as 010 and Pisa as 001. This is what is called a one-hot encoding. 
Let us summarize the main insights of this video. If our data behaves non-linearly in a given input dimension, we may wish to model this non-linear behavior. To do so, we can augment our input feature vector by adding functions of the input that represent the non-linearity we wish to model. Additionally, if certain input features come from a discrete set of options, we can model this as a one-hot encoding. Thanks for watching this video.